my brothers and sisters, on the second Sunday in this month of April, I began a series of sermons titled Moving into the Promised Land. I shared with you that as we knew Providence make preparations to move into the new promised land that God has for us, that I thought that it would be beneficial for us to look at the children of Israel as they entered into the promised land as recorded in the Old Testament book of Joshua. I told you that I believe that we can learn some valuable lessons from the children of Israel that will help us as a church to navigate and conquer the new promised land that God has for us. In the first sermon, we told you that God gives Joshua five promises. He tells Joshua, I am giving you the land of promise. Everywhere that you walk or step will be yours. Your enemies will be helpless against you. And as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. God did not tell Joshua that he and the children of Israel upon entering the promised land would have to immediately face four challenges. The challenges were the Jordan River, the cities of Gilgal, Jericho, and Ai. And standing in between of the children of Israel's entrance into the promised land was the swollen out of its banks Jordan River. I told you that God wanted to teach Joshua, the children of Israel, and us the lesson that as we move into the promised land, not to get distracted or deterred by the obstacles that are before us. But trust God to make a way out of no way. And after they came to the Jordan, Joshua and the children of Israel came into the first city of the promised land called Gilgal. And the Bible told us now when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over. The Bible told us that their hearts melted with fear and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. And from this scriptural verse, we lifted the second lesson that we learned from the Israelites as they moved into the promised land. And the lesson was this. Don't be discouraged by opposition as you move into your promised land. And as I ended the first sermon, God told Joshua to make flint knives 
and circumcised the Israelites again. And I shared with you a third lesson. And that lesson was that everything that God commands us to do won't feel good to us. Sometimes God will require obedience in things that are painful and hurtful. And then on last Sunday, we continued to move into the promised land with the children of Israel as they encountered the city of Jericho. And last Sunday, we learned that Jericho was a fortified city. There was a wall around the entire city of Jericho. The city of Jericho was a military stronghold. But we also learned that the king of Jericho barred the gates of Jericho because he heard that the Israelites were on the move toward the city. The king of Jericho thought that by barring the city gates that he could keep God's people from, from entering the city. And I told us on last Sunday that if God has something for us, no one can stop us from getting what God has for us. We learned on last Sunday that the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. And at the time God gave Joshua and the army of Israel this prophetic word. Joshua and the army of Israel had not gone into battle. They had not shot an arrow, nor drawn a sword, or employed a battering ram to the city gate. But God had confirmed that victory for Joshua and the children of Israel was guaranteed. Joshua had to trust and have faith in God's word that it would come to pass. And I told us that as we move into the new territory that God has for us, we too must have faith and trust in God's word to do the impossible. Then the Lord said to Joshua, March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of Aaron's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, March around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. On last Sunday, I told you that the walls of Jericho were approximately 15 feet high. This would give the army of Jericho an advantage over the children of Israel. You see, from the walls of the city, the army of Jericho could rain down spears and arrows on the army of Israel. 
but God <laughs> tells them to march around the city. In other words, God tells Joshua to let the enemy know that you are not scared. And I told you on last Sunday, as we move into the new territory that God has for us, we must let the enemy know that we too are not scared. Even though we know that the enemy called COVID-19 or coronavirus is still in the land, we must not be afraid to move forward and trust in the Lord. And then another lesson that we learned from Joshua and the children of Israel as they moved into the promised land and marched around the wall of Jericho is total obedience to God is necessary for victory. God tells Joshua that for six days they are commanded to march around the city of Jericho once. But on the seventh day they should march around the city seven times. As long as they obeyed God's directions, they were assured victory. And we learned on last Sunday that partial obedience is disobedience. And disobedience ushers in defeat. Only total obedience to God assures victory. And we also learn from Joshua and the children of Israel as they moved into the promised land and marched around the wall of Jericho, we also learned about the importance of the discipline of the practice of silence. <laughs> Y'all remember? The Bible told us that God tells Joshua to have the army march around the city in silence. And I suggested to us on last Sunday that some of us as we move into the new territory that God has for us need to learn how to keep our mouths closed. Everybody should not get a response from us. And mature Christians don't respond to everything that is said about them because they have learned the importance of the discipline of the practice of silence. In other words, sometimes we don't need to let the enemy know our thoughts. And the last lesson that we learned from Joshua and the children of Israel as they moved into the promised land and marched around the wall of Jericho was don't forget to shout. <laughs> don't forget to praise the Lord for the victories that he has given unto us. So if you missed the last two weeks, you just got the snapshot. So today, as we continue our march with Joshua and the children of Israel into the promised land, we want to learn a few lessons from them as they move towards the city of Ai. Now, Ai was approximately 10 miles from the city of Jericho. The city of Ai was not a military stronghold, 
nor did the city of Ai have a wall surrounding it. Ai was a small city. It, it, it's compared like Verena, about the size of Verena. I didn't say Fuquay Verena, I just said Verena. Those of you who've been living in this area, you understand what I'm saying. The Israelites have just won a major victory over the fortified city of Jericho. The Israelites were told to march around the wall of Jericho once for six days. On the seventh day, they were told to march around the wall of Jericho seven times. And after the seventh lap around the city, to shout. And as a result of the supernatural move of God, when they shouted, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. This was a great victory for Joshua and the children of Israel. Matter of fact, in Joshua chapter 6, verse 27, the Bible tells us, so the Lord was with Joshua and his fame spread throughout the land. Now, notice with me that when we turn over to chapter 7, the first word that we read is but. And uh, we learned in school that the word but is a canceling uh, conjunction. Whatever comes before the but is diminished. But that which follows the but is highlighted. Before the but, the Israelites had a great military victory. Before the but, Joshua's fame was spreading throughout the land. Before the but, the children of Israel were feared by their enemies because God was with them and God fought for them. But <laughs> when we get to chapter 7, we are told that the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. You see, before the children of Israel conquered the city of Jericho, God told Joshua to tell the people in Joshua chapter 6, verses 17 through 19, that the city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on the whole entire camp. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go 
into his treasury. Listen, brothers and sisters, everybody was told what God's demands were. Everybody knew that everything in the city of Jericho was to be destroyed except the silver, the gold, the articles made of bronze, and the articles made of iron. They were to be placed in the treasury, but everything else was devoted to the Lord. But the Bible lets us know that there was one brother, one person who decided to go contrary to the commands of the Lord. One person who decided that they did not have to follow God's law. Just one person who thought that they were above the law. One person who violated the law and thought that he could get away with it. It was one like Derek Chauvin who thought that he could get away with the murder of George Floyd. The Bible says that Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, Judah took some of the devoted things. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. And let me pause right here to say that it only takes one person's disobedience to mess things up for everybody else. You don't believe me? Ask Adam. And he would testify to you that even though I loved my wife Eve, I should have never listened to her promptings in the Garden of Eden. And because I listened, I messed it up. <laughs> for mankind, for everybody. Well, the Bible says in verse 2 of chapter 7, Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth-Avon, to the east of Bethel and told them, go up and spy out the region. Now, my brothers and sisters, this was not a new practice for Joshua and the children of Israel. Remember, when Moses was alive, Moses sent out spies to look over the promised land. And before Joshua entered into the promised land, he sent spies to check out the city of Jericho. And now we see Joshua sending spies to check out the city of Ai. The Bible says in verse 3 that when they, talking about the spies, 
returned to Joshua. They said, not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it. And do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. Here we find the first lesson that we can learn from Joshua and the children of Israel as they move into the promised land toward the city of Ai. And that lesson is this. Don't underestimate the strength of the enemy. Did you hear what I said? The lesson we can learn is don't underestimate the strength of the enemy. <laughs> the spies came back to Joshua and told Joshua that he did not need to send the entire army but just a few. In other words, they were saying to Joshua, Joshua we checked out the city. And guess what? We got this. <laughs> we are stronger and much more powerful than our enemies. Joshua, we can crush them. And maybe, just maybe, the spies thought that since they just experienced a poetic victory over the city of Jericho and its inhabitants, and they were in a walled city, that victory would come easy in the little city of Ai. Maybe, just maybe, Israel had overestimated their own strength. And come on now, come on, let's be honest. Some of us who are watching and listening today have experienced some challenges in life where we thought that we were ready to face and conquer our enemy just to discover that we were not as ready as we thought we were. Am I right about it? There have been some times that we underestimated the strength of the enemy and suffered a great defeat. We suffered a loss of our joy. We suffered a loss of our peace. We suffered a loss of our hope. We suffered a loss of our spiritual stamina. And come on, some of us even almost lost our spiritual minds. Well, the spies underestimated the strength of the people of Ai. Matter of fact, a little later in chapter 8 and verse 25, the Bible tells us that when the children of Israel finally 
conquered Ai, that 12,000 men and women were killed. <laughs> Remember that the spies told Joshua to send only two to 3,000 men. The enemy had them outnumbered. And guess what? They did not even know it. And just like Joshua and the children of Israel, we too, as we move into the new promised land that God has for us, must not underestimate the enemy strength. We must not assume that one victory guarantees another victory. We cannot just do what we did in the past and think that it will assure us victory in the future. We must put on the whole armor of God in order to stand against the wiles of the devil. Secondly, after the spies tell Joshua not to send the whole army to conquer the city of Ai, if you read the scriptural text closely, the Bible says in verse 4, so about 3,000 went up. Notice with me what the Bible doesn't say. The Bible doesn't say that after Joshua received the report from the spies that he and the elders prayed to God and asked God should they go up against Ai. <laughs> there is no indication that they sought out first what the will of the Lord was. They did not consult God about a battle strategy or how to take the city of Ai. The Bible says they just went up. <laughs> And my brothers and sisters, we learn a second lesson from Joshua and the children of Israel as they move into the promised land. And the lesson is this. Don't forget the importance of the priority of prayer. Let me give you that second lesson again. Don't forget the importance of the priority of prayer. <laughs> Listen, by this time, Joshua and the children of Israel should have learned the lesson on the importance of consulting with God before they made any moves. Read the text. There is no mention of prayer. There is no evidence that they were depending on God for their victory over Ai. They thought that they themselves had the power to win 
and Ai. And how many of us are willing to admit that we've entered into some battles in which we failed to pray first about it because we thought we had the strength on our own to win just to discover that we should have, have consulted God first. Maybe, listen, miss, listen, listen to me. Maybe if we would have prioritized prayer, we would not have suffered a loss but experienced a win. Look at the text. The Bible tells us that Joshua sent 3,000 men, but they were routed by the men of Ai who killed about 36 of them. Listen to me good. If Joshua and the children of Israel would have prayed before they went up against Ai. God could have told them not to go up against the city because sin was in their camp and that they would be defeated. God could have warned them that someone <laughs> took of the devoted things. God could have warned them and could have diverted them from imminent destruction. That's if they would have prayed first. But check this out. It was after they had been defeated that Joshua and the elders of Israel decided that we better pray. <laughs> Verse 6 tells us, Then Joshua, after being defeated, tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust as an other sign of mourning on their heads. And Come on, my brothers and sisters. Don't we too oftentimes wait until things are not looking good for us to pray? Don't we fail to prioritize prayer as our first course of defense. Joshua and the children of Israel suffered a great loss at Ai simply because they did not properly prioritize prayer. And as I end this sermon, we learn today from Joshua and the children of Israel not to underestimate the strength of the enemy and not to forget the importance of the priority of prayer. 
and New Providence Baptist Church and friends. As we move into the new territory that God has for us, we too must make prayer our first priority. We must constantly seek God's directions. We must constantly seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. We must seek first God's instructions for our lives. We must not lean to our own understanding, but acknowledge God in all our ways in order for God to direct our paths. Listen, my brothers and sisters, I challenge you as saints of the Most High God to prioritize prayer in your life. I challenge you to pray. Pray in season. Pray out of season. Pray when things are going well. Pray even when you're going through hell. Pray uh, like the old saints used to say, just have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about our troubles he will hear our faintest cry and he will I said he will I know he will answer by and by is there anybody who is watching and listening today who knows that God will answer prayer God will hear your cry God will answer by and by and guess what he may not come when you want him but he's always 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 on time do you know what the new day remix is it is he may not come when you want him but you're gonna want him when he comes pray pray why because pray changes things pray changes people Prayer changes circumstances. Prayer allows God to communicate with his children. And prayer, if we prioritize it, will guide our decision making. I'm a witness that if we prioritize prayer, that prayer can keep us from being defeated by the enemy.